Computer that was built by a friend of his, Steve Wozniak, and planned to create a startup where not a lot of people were interested in it. So, in Steve Jobs' movies, when Wozniak says, Nobody wants to buy a computer, nobody. This really demonstrates what was happening during that time. Technology wasn't that entertaining. And now a lot of people see the potential of it. But now everything has shifted. If we go anywhere, we could see we can see people having a smartphone in their hands or pocket or computer in their bags. My talk today is going to focus on technologies, but more specifically, people using technology to help solve problems. These people and this engineer and this text inspires me and I hope it inspires you too. Yeah. So, I am now a student at the Ligon Leadership Academy, but I grew up in a family that was not very interested in technologies. Last summer, I did an internship at, a, at an electronics and engineering startup called Aerodot, and this made me think of giving a talk about promoting technologies, because I, I used to have a mindset that not a lot of people in this country have a clear understanding of technologies. But I was proven wrong after I did my one month internship. Most high technological hardware all contain what we call a microcontroller or a microprocessor. These have to execute an array of functions that the programmers tell them to do. They are just like, they are just just like a brain where it can control other devices or machines. Also, it's just like human. We use our brain, uh, we use our brain to get information and transmit those information to other parts of our bodies. Inside microcontrollers and microprocessors, there are millions of transistors. As an example, the Core i7 quad CPU contains 131 million transistors. Phones, computers, all contain one of these or other type of integrated circuit, in shortcut IC. It is really cool to see and touch a virtual brain by our hands. Is that amazing? Yes. We can interact with different DIY system. Like instead of buying a integrated motion sensor, we can buy a DIY sensor and implement our own system very easily. If we, if we make something by ourselves, we can have a control over it. We can write a very advanced code to do a very advanced motions or calculations. By doing this, we have to improve our problem solving skills, determination, ingenuity and education about hardware and most importantly it is cheaper trust me arduino is a very easy accessible platform to learn programming and electronics and it can be used to help solve large scale problems sasa harada is an engineer who used arduino to help clean the ocean he created a device where it collects oil after it has been spilled. From this example, we can see that we can see the potential of technologies and the ability to maximize our knowledge, not only helping ourselves, but also helping others and the environment. So, here in Cambodia, our government has worked with a company called Ongo Engineering and Consulting to implement a system where the government can monitor all of the movement and the activities of, of the licensed sand dredging boats. This is a really amazing project where they use open source hardware to, 
to prevent illegal sand dredging and exert more control over them. So from this example, we can see this part of science really can do a variety of things, especially our government has worked with private sectors to use hardware and ITCs to help solve problems. So, I want to move on to the next slide. <laughs> next slide. Yeah. Now, let's move this inspirational person that ins inspired me. And he is one of the founders at Aerodot, where I had my internship. Previously, he stated that if we don't have technologies, it feels like we are living in a past where people don't know anything. His name is Yumbun Chad, and what he's tried to comment on is that how technology plays an immense role in, connect, in connecting people. And if we block that field, it feels like people will have less improvement like in the past many decades. So, Connected to real life, if we still have a mindset that combining technology never get better, it feels like we are pulling ourselves back to the past 200 years or 400 years. A group of university students, led by Undaros, had improved the quality of life for a disabled people. He and his team had prototyped what we call a mind control robot, where it can implement on wheelchairs. To run this robot, we don't have to do anything. We're just thinking by go left or go right. He finished the prototype about a year ago and gets a lot of attention from students like me and other tech fans. Not a lot of, not a lot of Cambodian have ever seen something like this before. A robot that control that can read our mind? That is crazy. In July 2017, a Cambodian high school team from Siem Reap was participated in a first global robotic competition in the United States. This competition involved very serious coding and very serious robots mechanics. By the end of the competition, Cambodian got 20 seconds out of 163 countries. What a range. This team had influenced and inspired a lot of Cambodians in striving to achieve the next level of our understanding. Um, in December 2016, a team called Bot Jetsu were participated in another advanced robotic competition called Vex Robotics that were located in Taiwan. And I was a part of the team working on coding side. We spent seven weeks to build a robot and writing codes to prepare for the competitions. We were really proud to be the first Cambodian who participated in this event. So, at the, at the event, there were very, very competitive robots, and the lab at the school was world class. I couldn't imagine how big the lab were. So, let's move on the statistic of the technology field in this country. Personally, I have a strong belief that technology field in this country improved so much in this past decade. Visually, we can see that in 2010, there wasn't any Taipei or there weren't that much of flat screen TVs. The Voice of America stated that in 2010, the number of internet, internet usage was about 0.3 million users. While in 2015, the number increased so much, it increased to 6 0.7 million users. 
That is an astonishing ch shift to this country for five years. Gigs in Cambodia, a popular tech blog, reported that in, two, in 2015, 95% of the population owned phone and 39.5% of those own smartphones. Also, there were also the number of social media from 2016 to 2017 previously increased 1.6 billion users. It appears like we are running into this field where people are creating a really strong bond with computers, phones, or other devices. Because we are running into this field, it is really important that we, the user, have to keep the momentum of this flow. There are still some people with mindset that would limit those software and hardware engineers who try their best to get a system for us to use. Instead of holding them back, why don't we help to push them, motivate them, and appreciate them for making new products or services? Events like Technovations, STEM Festival, Bar Camp, Hackathon, and Startup Weekend are opening doors for technical and non-technical Cambodian to involve to create a product or services that would help to simplify real-life issues. High school students, kids, engineers, adults, companies are trying their best to compete with national and international competitors in the name of improvement. I have a belief that having more people interested in this field will, will lead Cambodia to have we, we have, we create more opportunities for Cambodians to get more jobs, and which leads to a stronger and more independent economy. Thank you.